Google, Google's uh, driverless car, when they first introduced, uh, they were using a vehicle with about uh, $30,000. Their sensor, LiDAR itself was about $60,000. And obviously, those are not for mass production. They cannot really sell three times more uh, cost of a vehicle, even though it has a good sensors. That's why maybe Tesla is uh, using, based on uh, cameras and, and radar system, much cheaper than LiDAR. Uh, the challenge of uh, LiDAR is uh, they don't have a really good solution with the uh, rains and fogs and snow, including weather conditions. Uh, so that's a big challenge and technology is getting better. People are talking about 4D radar, try to avoid it. Radar can actually go through the rain and snows. Um, so technology is getting evolved and then I'm, I'm optimistic uh, there will be a solution to uh, solve that inclement weather conditions. Uh, it could be a mix of those. Uh, there is a technology solely based on camera and doing good lane keeping and, and uh, adaptive cruise control. And if you actually drive a few hours, uh, that's a good enough for you. You don't have to really do a lot of hands-on because you can do uh, always on lateral control. So you don't have to do active steering wheel. You have to monitor, obviously. And you can do good adaptive cruise control of following the, the leader vehicle. And, and that helps a lot in, in uh, workload of uh, driving. And I, I experienced that, and a lot of people here uh, experience that as well. I mean, I, I can give an example of uh, Tesla uh, uh, full self-driving module. Uh, recent update, uh, I was told that they, before that, they tried to uh, develop uh, machine learning-based algorithm, how to avoid the potential crashes. So people uh, estimate about 10 billion crashes out there happened so far. Uh, you cannot really train 10 billion crashes for, uh, it's a very, very uh, uh, time consuming efforts. Uh, they tried to do that and uh, the self-driving did not work very well. And, and they actually decided to change the entire framework. Instead of uh, uh, trying to have uh, machine learning avoiding collisions, they decide to mimic good drivers. So they retrain the entire their uh, FSD uh, module by mimicking good driver behaviors. And they seem doing better. And that's why they decide to have a one month of free trials. And still it's not there yet, but getting better. Uh, only concern I have is, uh, can I trust uh, artificial intelligence for safety critical situations? Uh, we have to be super careful. Obviously, the level three, we should be ready to take over, but still putting something, we don't know how it works exactly. And especially safety critical situation, it's just something not, I'm not comfortable. I, I'm not comfortable putting my little baby in the car and then doing myself yet. Uh, someday we might. Uh, so that's a sort of a concern I have, but someday we might be able to do better uh, but when it's ready, it's hard to tell. My personal experience uh, with talking to the uh, OEMs uh, like uh, GMs and Ford or Hyundai, uh, when I actually developed the algorithm for doing uh, connect the vehicle with the mixed traffic platooning, uh, that was like a 2018, 2019, uh, their response was, uh, we are busy figuring out how to make a ton of the vehicle doing the right thing, and not ready to do the connectivity. Uh, with the, most of the new vehicles uh, equipped with the adaptive cruise control and also connectivity, uh, now they seem more interested in talking to me about potentially doing uh, in advance of uh, mixed traffic platooning, because I, we, it can have a benefit. Uh, so it seems like a changing into connectivity is a more acceptable to improve efficiency, because uh, Automation cannot avoid a collision when you don't have a line of sight. Uh, you don't have sensors, you cannot really avoid. But having connectivity, you can actually do cooperative control. Uh, so that's something they, they realized or they knew, but maybe it's a time to consider uh, putting those into their new vehicles uh, to uh, make it safer and more efficient vehicles. But given uh, in, in the America is an uh, uh, auto industry, auto country, uh, 
personal vehicle is getting better. Even lower end of the vehicle is equipped with uh, adaptive cruise control. And that's actually uh, very helpful for driving highway or urban road with the stop and go conditions. So ADAS is actually, I'm very optimistic to getting uh, more uh, accepted by people and more than half of the cars are now equipped with ACC and connectivity. It's gonna be higher and higher. With the electric vehicles, the control of a vehicle is getting easier and quicker. Uh, so that's uh, easier to control ACCs and, and adaptive cruise control uh, and other ADAS systems. So that's a probably direction I, we see a lot more. Hopefully the trucking industries are adopting the platooning among the trucks. Uh, that's a probably very optimistic way. Uh, Waymo and, and uh, Uber are doing some, uh, Waymo and Cruise are actually doing the rear Uber like a service without having safety driver in Phoenix and in San Francisco. Obviously, GM Cruise had uh, some hiccups, but uh, technology wise, uh, we are getting there. Uh, and I've, I have driven the uh, Waymo in Phoenix, Arizona area, and then they seem doing better driving than me. <laughs> uh, so, so it's, it's, I'm optimistic, yeah.